I've always wanted to be a counter slumlord, since I learned that MLB star Alex Rodriguez bought 1,000 slum units in 2013. If it's good enough for him, then the lifestyle is good enough for me. In August 2021, it was time to begin my pursuit of counter slumlordship. I set out to earn enough money online to buy a crack house as a real estate investment, and while doing so, I had a secondary objective. I would also cast down the false make money online gurus and show YouTube viewers some real ways to make money online. In that first month, I made a modest $57 in some altcoin called XYO, $75 cash and a bar of soap. A year later, I had a simple group of methods that were pulling in a collective $1,500 a month in cash and gift cards. Now, in summer 2024, I'm typically making over $3,000 a month with a handful of the most successful methods, and I'm always on the lookout for more. I have shown YouTube how anyone can make money online, and there's no need for you to have a long exploration phase like I had in the first two years. You can jump right into the high earning methods by just going straight for what works best. To my secondary objective, I declare victory. But my goal from the beginning was a financial one. I wanted to make a real estate investment by purchasing a crack house. In reality, you can buy a crack house in Baltimore for under $10,000, but it would be completely beyond repair. And even getting to the crack house without being robbed would be problematic, unless I go in disguise. Oh, no. My goal from the beginning was to collect about $30,000 dollars for an extreme fixer-upper, but one that's at least plausible to fix and rent out. And now that I've expanded my bankroll, I'm there. But here I stand at the cusp of slumlordship, and with this honorable status at hand, I question myself. Do I really want this? Especially right after my son was born, and both of my children are too young to be used for manual labor. I've been looking up crack house repair. It's work. A lot of work. I never expected to be making $3,000 a month off the freeloader challenge. That's way beyond my wildest expectations. So why then would I want to commit so much money, effort, and time to a crack house that might, at best, yield a couple hundred dollars a month in cash flow, or at worst, end up being a liability? The truth is, I don't. I do not want to own a crack house, at least not one like the funny condemned house images I've been sharing. But when I solicited my viewers for feedback, it turns out you guys really don't want me to blue ball you. The loyal viewers would be very upset if I abandoned the plan. You want me to see this mission through, and people yearn for crack house slumlordship, and I will not abandon you. But part of being a freeloader means you don't always have to settle for rock bottom. I need to shift my goal from crack house to crack palace. My freeloader income has broken through the glass ceiling. So too should my freeloader goals. And with a bankroll that's expanding pretty rapidly, I've decided to delay my crack house purchase so that I can aim higher. Crack house is out. Crack palace is in. Freeloaders deserve only the best. Just as importantly in that poll to the masses, I admitted that I miss stock trading. I don't miss the 3K challenge, but trading is so much more than option spreads. In my personal life, I still invest all the time, and this channel is supposed to be about stock trading. So why can't the freeloader challenge incorporate investing? Invest, 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 invest. I've made the decision that while I spend the next year expanding my bankroll and waiting for my children to age up so that I can use them for manual labor, I will also invest my freeloading gains instead of leaving it collecting dust in the bank. But this begs the question, why should I even invest at all? The Robinhood 3K challenge went nowhere for three years until I decided to make or break it with a reckless final trade. Why would this time be any different? To that, I reference the great Japanese philosopher Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu famously said, if you know the market and your risk tolerance, you need not fear the result of 1,000 trades. If you know the market but not your risk tolerance, then for every gain you will face an equal loss. If you know neither the market nor yourself, you will take infinite L's. Let's reference the Dunning-Kruger curve. During the era of the 3K challenge, what you guys witnessed was this. I knew how to use option strategies, but I didn't have my heart in the strategies I employed. The wheel is dead because it can't beat buy and hold, especially after accounting for taxes. And trading any other options without regard for market implied volatility is a losing proposition, and I didn't respect that at the time. A dirty secret is that my actual investing portfolio looked nothing like the 3K challenge that whole time. To this day, 90% of my portfolio is buy and hold ETFs, with the rest being value investing and a sprinkle of option strategies. When I do trade options, volatility, specifically VIX, drives the decision of when to open and close. I almost exclusively trade undefined risk strategies now, like the short strangle. With this new chapter for the freeloader challenge, I get to invest the way I actually invest. And you just don't blow up your account by holding shares of indexed ETFs. And in doing this, I get the added benefit of showing my freeloading followers how to invest invest responsibly. I'm ready to invest the coffers I've built so far in a traditional and conservative manner. When VIX spikes to about 20, I'll employ the option strategies I've historically succeeded with. All I need 
is a flexible broker. The broker I choose for my freeloading is Moomoo because they offer level four options like short strangles, which I actually trade. They offer 5.1% APY on cash, boosted to 8.1% in the first three months, which will be the majority of my short-term holdings. And they do these bonus point games where you get free shares. While I freeload, my returns will be consolidated for this APY that beats almost all banks. I currently have about $4,600 in my Moomoo account, and my wife has 421, which she collected when I referred her to a previous deposit bonus. Short shout out here, in July and August, Moomoo is running a similar bonus now in which new users receive eight free stocks for a $100 bonus or 20 free stocks with a $1,000 deposit. I have to use my referral to get the full reward. Otherwise, it's a max of 15 shares. So you get an extra five with my link. We'll talk more about Moomoo later in terms of how I actually plan to trade. You can also see my trade updates on the free app StockPick where I'll share my openings and closings. In the meantime, let's take inventory of the slush fund I've built since the dawn of the freeloader challenge. Posit it into Moomoo and get to work toward earning this crack house. <clears throat> crack palace. In my freeloader crypto wallet, I have about $4,500, most of which is Bitcoin earned through free cash. A small amount is Tron left over from when I was counter scamming scammers. I won't liquidate the crypto unless I need to in order to buy the crack palace later, so it will stay where it is for now. My Skrill wallet has $13,333.39, almost all of which was accumulated with the first method I'll be showing you. Besides being a lot of threes, that's more than I need to stash here. I'll maintain about $5,000 of liquidity, and then I'll continue funneling the additional gains to my investment account. The biggest holdings are cash in my Wells Fargo account, which I set up specifically for the freeloader challenge. These accounts hold about $19,150 some of which came unexpectedly. You may recall that about a year ago, I somehow misplaced a significant amount of freeloader challenge money. At the time, I wasn't even using a spreadsheet to track my income, and I assumed I had just lost track of it while mixing my personal and freeloading money. While preparing for this video, I ended up finding that cash in a bank account I had long since abandoned. Almost $7,000 was sitting in some cash management account called Aspiration. If you think finding $5 in a jacket pocket is nice, try finding seven grand in an old bank account. I've since moved that to Wells Fargo. Like I said, I don't need all that cash doing nothing. I'll I'll leave $5,000 in Skrill and another $5,000 in Wells Fargo and move the rest over to Moomoo for the higher APY. On Moomoo itself, I also have about $4,600 already. These larger accounts total about $41,800, plus some smaller balances elsewhere like PayPal, Cash, and other old bank accounts. My grand total for the freeloader challenge so far is just over $44,000. My intention on Moomoo is to invest in ETFs and trade short strangles when market volatility is high. This is a method described by Tasty Trade, and I'll link a good playlist here. Right now, VIX is moderate at around 15. My preference is to trade short strangles when VIX is above 18, but just for practice, I'll do a quick demonstration of how I will trade during this challenge. First, we'll hit the magnifying glass and the search for SPY. On the bottom, we will indicate that we want to trade options that will pull up the options chain. Everyone has their own opinion on how far into the future you should set your expirations. Personally, I prefer 60 days to expiration. We will usually close well before that when we're at 50% gain. So I will scroll over to September 20th expirations. By default, the chain will show options prices, but I'm not interested in that. What I need to see is the delta. So let's slide the view over until we get the delta. I strongly prefer to sell options at the 16 delta. So let's find the call option at the 16 delta and that's 582. I'll indicate I want to sell that and then I'll start scrolling for the 16 delta on the put side. That's the 520 strike. So I'll indicate that I'm selling both options, 16 delta call and put for a total of 566 premium. My goal will be to take profits at 50% for a gain of 283. But look, here's an issue. I need $10,000 of cash to enter level four options. That's on the way from Wells Fargo and Skrill. But while I wait for that, I also want to beef up my portfolio with Triple QM, the premier NASDAQ ETF that should outperform my APY on cash. If you do not hold shares of VOO or Triple QM, you are wrong and I will not allow this portfolio to be wrong. Let's hit the freeloader streets and earn some cash so I can pump up my portfolio with this indexed ETF. I'll cover my big three methods for maximum freeloading. Kicking off with method number one, we've got the most lucrative of all freeloader challenge methods. This is sweepstakes casinos, AKA social casinos. And in the months of May and June, I made $8,233 in gains. My goal in July is to make an additional 4,000. That's without referrals. That's just me playing like everyone else. With Triple QM trading at about $200, that gain will pay for about 20 shares to start off. This is my favorite freeloading method. And I've gone through some substantial detail in other videos, so I won't spend a lot of time doing that here. I will just link the more comprehensive videos. In this video, I instead want to address two important changes to the counter gambling scene that we all need to take advantage of. The first is stake. This is one of the oldest social casinos that used to only deal in cryptocurrency. 
Recently, it started rolling out the ability to purchase your coins by credit card. This is huge, and here's why it matters. Stake has a robust VIP system that takes really good care of you as you level up. In the past, and I'm talking two years ago, it used to offer as much as 5% bonuses on your purchases. In other words, for $100, you'd get 105 sweeps coins. With that 5% bonus, you can satisfy the casino's playthrough requirement, come out with more than you started with, and level up your VIP. Over the past couple years, that 5% bonus was reduced reduced down to 3%, then 2%, then 1%, and now only half a percent. For months, it was no longer possible to come out on top while grinding VIP because the bonus was too low. But now with credit card purchases, we get cash back on the credit card side. This restores that edge and makes it profitable to grind VIP once again. I tested this out myself and I made a $200 purchase. This awarded me with 201 SC due to that half percent bonus. I performed the typical dice playthrough method and finished with 195 SC. That's a 95.5% return to player. Rakeback added a few cents, so claiming my rakeback put me at 195.2 SC. Any credit card with a 3% promotional cash back, particularly the Discover It Miles card, would already add $6 and put you above the $200 buy in. At 2% cash back, you're within $1 of break even. The $1 a day sign-in bonus will already cover that, and the weekly VIP boost will also push you further into the green. The conclusion is VIP grinding on stake is back to a positive return. You can profitably increase your VIP on stake once again. All you need is a good credit card. And we'll talk more about that later, but the Discover It Miles is the easiest to get and one of the best to use. The cash out from credit card purchases on stake uses a system called Breeze. It does take a couple days to hit your account, so the cash out is slower than with crypto, but no more burdensome otherwise. Not every stake user has this credit card option right now, stake is still rolling it out, but I strongly encourage you to check your purchase options and see if you have it. The other significant development is to the casino sweep slots. This is a relative newcomer to the scene, but one that I've been saying will quickly become a fan favorite. And the primary reasons I say that are twofold. First, it's already got the best catalog of games, bar none. Sweep Slots is also expecting to add live table games to its list in the near future, probably before I even publish this video. Whatever your preferred game is, it's going to be there. And second, more importantly, Sweep Slots has developed its VIP system. Previously, there weren't any real rewards for leveling up, but now the VIP system rewards users with better and better weekly promotions depending on your VIP level. This was that missing element, but now that the platform has a worthwhile VIP system, it is among the best, probably my favorite. I'm currently on Platinum Prestige VIP, and I'll very soon make it to Diamond Dynasty, where the VIP promotions get even better. Sweep Slots works well with Skrill, so my very strong recommendation to you is to establish an account on Skrill to fund and redeem from Sweep Slots and use gold coins and sweeps coins to increase your VIP. I know all this about social casinos is a lot to bite off, but I encourage you to check out the earliest videos I made on this, and then you can get your feet wet before working your way up. And now, did I hit my July goal of $4,000. Indeed, I exceeded my goal by very little because I grinded toward the end and then stopped once I hit my target so I can make this video. You may be tempted to ask why I even bother with doing anything else. Why am I even going to show you more freeloading methods when social casinos carry weight like this? I see all the time on Discord, people are in way too deep into this. Their retirement plan is to play on social casinos and win. And if a platform makes a change that they don't like, such as getting rid of their favorite promotion, that player loses his mind. Take it from me, McLuck's Social Casino is not a retirement plan. Expand your horizons, please. And further, the Freeloader Challenge is supposed to be for everyone. In some states, particularly Washington, cannot play these games. The state is just boxed out. But I want to show people who live there freeloading methods that they can do. My $4,000 gain will be shoveled over to Moomoo to buy shares of Triple QM. With the stock trading for around $200, this will buy me 20 shares. This is a great start, but I want more. And like I said, this cannot be your be all end all. Let's move on to the next method. Moving to method number two, we have credit card churning, enabled by the aforementioned technique. Credit card churning is pretty well known at this point. We're basically cycling through credit cards until we hit a predetermined level of spend, at which point we get a bonus statement credit from the credit card issuer. For example, in the past three months, I churned the Capital One Spark card. By spending $6,000 within 90 days, I got a $750 statement credit. Obviously, if you're spending $6,000 to get $750, you're not profiting. But unless you've been sleeping through this video, you will already see a clear opportunity to spend money without spending money. And I'll show you another way later on. Once Capital One gave me that $750 statement credit, that $750 I can do whatever I want with. I charged $750 bucks to purchases at the casinos Chumba, Sweep Slots, and Moto, and redeemed a little over $800 as cash. 
Since that 750 buy-in was paid with the statement credit, I get to keep the whole $800 as profit. Now that I'm done with Capital One, I'm moving on up to the Chase Business Unlimited, which is almost the exact same thing as the Chase Business Inc., which I churned during the winter. But if Chase wants to give me another $750 bonus to swap from the Inc. to the Unlimited, that's just free money for me. You can do this with just about any credit card. Doctor of Credit is a great website to find some for you. But I said prior that the Discover It Miles card is the easiest for new people. If you use a referral, you'll get a $100 statement credit on your first purchase, no matter the size, and then you get a high cash back in your first year. You get 1.5% cash back right away, and then at the end of the first year, they match that 1.5% again. So 3% total cash back. This is an easy card to get, and it's disproportionately rewarding. I've maxed out my referrals for the year, but I'll have another freeloader's referral in the description, and I'm sure he'd appreciate the clicks. To recap this round, the Capital One churn got me $750, which I played to $800. So I'll take that value and buy some more Triple QM with it. This will add four shares to my portfolio and put me at 24 total. We're getting there, so let's carry on. Moving on to method number three, we have focus groups. And this has been a reliable source of a few hundred bucks every month. And before I discovered sweepstakes casinos, it was my favorite approach. I've been using a few websites to connect with companies and research groups that want feedback on some ideas and we get paid for sharing our thoughts. Over the past two months, I did four of these. The first two I did through userinterviews.com, which is my preferred site. The first was with a company that wants to make a social stock brokerage similar to Public, StockTwits, and SoFi on which you can copy trade. They asked me a lot about why I chose to invest on SoFi, and I think they were a little bit hurt that it was just for the signup bonus. You deposit $10 and you get $25 for free. That's why I'm there, and it's a bonus that's still available to new users, by the way. I don't care about following some random retail investor or influencer. I just wanted the bonus. That's not what the researchers were hoping for. But with any luck, we'll see a new broker soon with a good signup bonus. For that hour, I got paid $100. Through user interviews once again, I found a focus group for people who edit images on their phones. They're producing an app to use AI to edit, and it did work pretty well. I hope they launch it. This one wasn't the most profitable, but it paid me $50 for an hour. I usually don't do less than $60 an hour, but I wanted to try this app. The next was from a Facebook ad. Given that it's an election year, focus groups tend to do a lot of political research. For this one, Republican researchers wanted to talk with multiple people at once who had become more conservative since the last election. I used to be quite liberal, but ever since I had kids, my taxes went up, and my car got broken into, I've become slightly more conservative. And I think the researchers had a really hard time understanding why people like me moved to the right. They were really pushing for anti-LGBT stuff, anti-woke Hollywood, more Christian values. They didn't understand. This is not a about not liking Bridgerton. It was pathetic how out of touch these guys were. My focus was unsurprisingly more based on finances, you know, reducing taxes, making things easier for the working class, but this wasn't reflected in what these what these researchers were pushing. Now, honestly, it was pretty pathetic how out of touch they were, but I did get $100 for 90 minutes of discussion, so there's a win. The last one was on credit cards, and it seemed to me like someone was doing the research on behalf of Amex. This was a case where you get $225 for doing their online activities, giving responses over a few days through their portal. I spent about 30 minutes per day for four days talking about credit cards on a forum and got paid $225 to PayPal. In forum talks like this, they also select people with good responses to do follow-up interviews. I put a lot into doing these forums, so I got selected and made another $75 for that hour. This made it an even $300 for three hours. This adds up to $550 for a total of six and a half hours, or just under $85 an hour. The user interview sites paid in Amazon cards and the others in cash. Historically, I've made a point to liquidate Amazon gift cards by selling them, but I use Amazon in my personal life, so I'm just going to sell these gift cards to myself and put the cash toward the shares. I've heard from a lot of people, particularly on Discord, where they're complaining that they apply to but never really get selected for focus groups. My very strong advice for you would be to look at your profile settings on the different websites. On user interviews, for example, you should build out a profile describing what your skills are, your age, your demographics, and then they will set you up with more relevant studies that will drastically increase your chances of getting selected. Although user interviews is my favorite, it's also not the only focus group website. There are a whole bunch more, and for one reason or another, one of them might just work better for you than others. So I would strongly encourage you to find websites that work, apply to a few more, and you will start getting selected for these things. Just make sure you build that profile so that the website knows what to send your way. That way you're only applying for relevant stuff. As for my returns this round, $550 is not quite enough for three shares, but I'll use this to buy two more 
and then hold $150 cash toward the next one. There are a few more things that I can cover, flipping medium grade items from a free Amazon server, magnet fishing for trash, and then building the city by weight, delivering DoorDash by e-bike, and selling voodoo dolls. These are all things I've either done before or am exploring now. But what I'd like to do is make these more focused videos with deep dives rather than a huge montage of 10 freeloading methods that often repeat. But if you guys would prefer one of those methods over the other, please do let me know in the comments. But for now, I am very happy with my total of $5,361 in gains for this episode, which is going straight to 26 shares of Triple QM. Adding this new gain to my previous holdings of $44,034, I am now at $49,395, and I am very much looking forward to busting that $50,000 ceiling. This is way more than I expected to make when I started this challenge, and I know my Crack Palace ownership is right around the corner. Between episodes, I'll be earning a little extra so I can pay all the taxes owed. And then in the next episode, I'll kick off fresh with another grind toward Crack Palace ownership. I want those of you watching to do more than just play social casinos, which has kind of taken over the freeloader challenge, even Kamikaze Cash in fact. I'm looking forward to combining my passions of freeloading and investing into one. I invite you guys to follow the trades in real time through Stockpick and to join our free Discord community. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next episode of the Freeloader Challenge.